Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MXGP 2021 and it's time for round 6 of our career mode and it's time for Belgium's Lommel. So here we go then starting on the outside of the grid and away we go a bit of a wheelie there on the acceleration on board the KTM but we'll now try and go around the outside of many riders is going to get a bit contact friendly going into the left hander there just before the Fox's hole shot. Rowan van der Moosdijk got the Fox's hole shot, but we were absolutely nowhere near. We got <laughs> certainly battered and bruised in that first corner, but we now take to the outside line. There's more carnage ahead of us. Didn't quite see who that was. Hopefully on the graphic, it will give us an update in a moment's time. But as you can see in the graphic in the left-hand side, it is going absolutely mental because of so many overtakes and changings of positions that I don't think it is going to update us with who just crashed a moment ago. But well, now onto the left-hand side, we have Jed Beaton ahead of us and Benestant even further ahead. Rohan van der Moosdijk just gets ahead of Jego Giertz and never mind, that just seems to have happened once again. So the battle up at the front is certainly a fierce one that we want to get ourselves involved with. So a big jump over here to try and get the KTM to land in the decline of the corner. Go for the outside line here and then hopefully bring on the acceleration nice and smoothly. Now, the last time I played here in Lommel, I had a bit of difficulty, so I'm not entirely sure how this one's going to go. Fingers are crossed, of course, for a good, solid Grand Prix. Now, of course, for race one, we are still leading the World Championship, so we have that elusive red plate on our KTM right now, but we now close in on Benestant, and we get to the left-hand side. Can we now chuck it ahead of him as we get a big leap here and then try and get into the tighter part here for the left-hander? Oh, very close to touching the rear tyre of his Yamaha, but now going into the left-hand section, this is the part where I tend to struggle with. It feels just really bumpy and really unstable to say the least, but we'll try and get on the right-hand side, going all over the place there ahead of Benestant, but we do manage to make the move and we are finally through up into fourth position, so the podium is beckoning the number 461 right now as we get on the left-hand side, keep it in nice and smooth keep it in nice and tight and then begin to bring on the acceleration on this particular part here to chase down Jed Beaton and the two riders ahead of him on track right now they're approaching the second corner already and we are nowhere near that right now so on the right hand side get into the berm here and then begin to bring on the power just gently though we don't want to be doing anything too aggressive now one thing I did mention or in a past video I think but uh, it's more so I'm going to mention it now anyway just in case I do use the dual sense control on on the PC when playing MXGP, Monster Energy Supercross, etc. And I keep the Dual Shot 4 for the Ride 4 in MotoGP, so the road racing stuff. And I must confess that the difference in the trigger is quite a lot actually because you can put a little bit of pressure and a little bit of sensitivity on the uh, on the right trigger for when it comes to the Ride 4 games with the Dual Shot 4, but when it comes to the PS5 controller, there's a bit of a dead zone. It's not as large as the one on the Xbox, but it's still a little bit different so I do have to get used to the acceleration every now and again I don't find that I really push as really much as I should or sometimes maybe I'm pushing too much because the acceleration is different on the uh, the different controller because of the uh, the gap and the uh, dead zone so I don't really like it but I love the rumble on the PS5 so it does take me a few races to get back into things but I, I don't feel too bad. I was a little bit worried at first but I don't feel too bad right now. We are in fourth position and Rohan van der Moosdijk not only lost first position but now second as well and he could potentially be at a threat for losing third position with a very eager Matt Grant on his tail. The number 461 with the red plate is charging and getting a bit out of shape on that right hander every single time I enter that corner. I just never find any satisfaction with it and I just always find like I'm losing the bike but thankfully we, we held on for now. So now in the rut we go getting a bit out of shape. Rowan van der Moosdijk has just gone down. What on earth happened to him? Did he hit the sign? I think he absolutely clattered in that sign on the right hand side of your screen there. Goodness me. Benestant also went down in the same spot so he could have done a replication of what van der Moosdijk has done but whatever has just happened there it has gifted us a podium position so I am eternally grateful for that one. Well, now on the left-hand side, a little bit of a jump there, just a little bit of a skip in the MXGP of Flanders, so we just have to be a little bit careful just jumping across that particular part. But now on the left-hand side, getting a bit out of shape, a bit wacky here. I'm definitely going to have to remove that uh, tear off because it was getting a bit difficult to see what was happening. That's why I really love the helmet cam. You get that extra additional bit of difficulty just with the helmet cam. Not only that it is harder anyway, but with the, uh, the visor filling up with dirt and mud and grime, it certainly does change the whole complexion of the video game. But now onto the left hand side, a little bit, we went a little bit too wide, touching the outside of the track, but now into the tighter part for the left hander here. 
nice acceleration on the outside there and that is pretty good so we're up into third position but I don't see any of the rides ahead of us they oh my goodness they are massively ahead of us this tends to happen quite a lot in MXGP 2021 the AI gets to the front and just disappears we like to do the same sometimes but today it certainly isn't going to be for us well it isn't in race one it could be in race two so definitely stick around for now and if you're enjoying this content be sure to hit the uh, like button and consider subscribing as well because of course a lot more ride for mxgp content motor gp you name it here on dot races channel and i got a little bit scared there because i thought we went over the rut there and made a massive mistake. So thankfully we're all right i did i did wince a little bit i definitely did win so don't, don't worry about that but we're all right we're good we're good now my lap time, oh my goodness, whoa, got it, whoa, Rowan van der Moosdijk went down there, so something happened to the KTM once again, but we completely messed that scrub up. I don't know why the scrubs are so difficult to do in MXGP 2021 within Helmet Cam, but they're not that hard on MX and uh, Monster Energy Supercross, my apologies, so I don't know what it is that I need to do or to change but I'm guessing a bit more practice then I'll sort it out. Now there's a bit of a ding dong of a battle going on at the first place right now between Jed Beaton and uh, Diego Giertz. It looks like Giertz has been knocked down to second place and Jed Beaton is in the lead so amazing performance from the man on board the Husqvarna. So not that long left in race one so far. We are on the final lap of course and uh, this video is dedicated to those who wanted MXGP 2021 to make a return. It had been three weeks since I last did a video so this is for you guys so especially the likes of Cody who really wants this video so shout out to you for being a loyal fan and waiting on for MXGP 2021 so hopefully this podium is for the aces we wanted the uh, MXGP videos to return. I wanted the MXGP videos to return it's just that uh, unfortunately they don't do very well compared to the likes of Ride 4 and MotoGP but still if you guys want the content I'm happy to deliver. So now onto the right hand side looking a little bit stronger here actually in this particular sector this will be good to know for the second race which is coming up very very soon. Of course this race one's been always a bit of a learning curve. Do the first race, just get used to things. We made a bit of a hash there. Let's get rid of that tear off and have a bit of better view for the next part of the Grand Prix. But now we'll be finishing this particular one, moving on to race two, but we'll be starting from third place. That could be pretty huge. Jed Beaton gets the victory, so he's miles ahead of us right now. Diego Schiertz in second, and I tell you what, Rowan van der Moosdijk is right on our tail right now, but Grant will hold on for the podium here in Belgium. So a quick recap so far, Jed Beaton takes the race one victory with Diego Schiertz in second, Grant in third, Rowan van der Moosdijk in fourth, and Thibault Benestant finishes in fifth position. So race two here in Belgium for Lommel, and away we go. That's a good start, actually, for the man on board the KTM. Can we get in the left-hand side here and take the Fox's whole shot? It does look like we're going to be able to do it. We do, just barely, because we got a little bit out of shape there on the acceleration. See the bike just skipping and squirming and weaving around on the circuit while we were trying to hold on to the acceleration there, just trying to position the bike in the best possible spot for the whole shot, and we got... The job done so on the left hand side with lots of acceleration and lots of determination we should be able to hold on to the end of this particular lap so of course this one being a short style sprint race we do have a good chance of getting a race two victory whoa massive moment there going into the left hander a little bit too much rear brake sent the rear uh, just careening around the bike but we managed to hold on i'm guessing grant's left ufo boot got slammed to the floor there just to position the bike around the corner but we're good for now we're still good a little bit of a couple of scares but we're in the lead and two minutes remaining of this session means that we have a good chance of victory here for race two and i don't know what the score is right now because of course we have to pay attention to the riders behind but the main goal is if we get the top spot and the other riders maybe fall by the wayside ever so slightly we could take the entire Grand Prix victory. Now that would be something to, to return back to. After three weeks absence, this could be absolutely fantastic. Jaeger Giertz has gone down from third position, so that is huge. If Jaeger Giertz doesn't finish in second or third, then we have a brilliant chance. I'm concerned about Jed Beaton. Jed Beaton is the man who can beat us, because if he is behind us, then he can beat us for the Grand Prix. But I'm not actually sure who it is in second place right now, but they are hot on my tail. They are really 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 close right now they could go for a lunge at any point if they wanted to but hopefully we'll get an indication of who it is in just a moment's time as we go on the left hand side for the first tighter berm and now begin to bring on the acceleration for this right hander it's getting super close i think he just touched my rear wheel there the bike just 
just slips ever so slightly. So, goodness me, he's super tight. Look at the look at the graphic in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. He is right there. I, I don't dare to look. I really don't dare to look to see who it is because by the time I've looked behind me and continued to start moving again, I've probably made a mistake. So, we'll just ignore him for now and just keep on pushing. As long as we can stay in the first position, we're good. And it's actually Thomas Vial. Tom Vial is not battling for the Grand Prix victory here today. He might be battling for a race two victory right now, but as long as we stay as we are, we're pretty good. I think he's made a mistake actually in that right-hander just a moment ago. It seems to be bunching up quite nicely for us, but it's still Tom Vial in second position. So as Thomas Vial stays in second position, then that is curtains for us because that means we will win the Grand Prix of Lommel, which is bloody brilliant. We have quite a few Belgian aces appearing recently, so I would like to dedicate this one to the Belgian aces if we can get this job done. So fingers crossed. Five seconds to go plus two laps. So we are moving in the right direction. We are trending in the best possible way. So we'll get on the right hand side and just continue to do what we do best and that is to churn out the lap times when we have the lead. So let's just keep on doing it. Keep on going. Keep on moving and we should have the race victory here in Lommel and I tell you what I'm enjoying this one and it's good to be back on MXGP, it really is. I've missed this game, I very much enjoy playing it and of course commentating so it's all good but I'm getting ahead of myself. We have just lost a bit more time, look at the bloody group behind us. They're like concertined up now, there's so many riders, there's a big train all in pursuit of the number 461's first position, they will not let it go. <laughs> we're just going to have to defend the best we possibly can. Their lap times were three seconds quicker than my lap time. One of them was six seconds as Rohan van der Moesdijk has gone down again. His MXGP of Belgium is not working out so far. He has had too many mistakes and yet again another one in the closing stages of race two here in Flanders. So it's still on though. <laughs> it's still definitely on. If he's not that far behind you can be able to pick up a little bit of slipstream and get involved. Not really like slipstream makes a massive difference, but still, it's something to pay attention to just in case. But we're going to the left hand side. Ruben Fernandez, the old championship rival, he's fallen by the wayside ever so recently, but still, never, never doubt the Spaniard. Just now, Tom Vial's gone down. Ruben Fernandez has gone down. Maybe we will doubt the Spaniard because he's just gone down. What is going on behind us? It's just seemed to be in carnage. I don't think it's a case of that we are just dominating. I think they're just genuinely just chopping themselves over, just tripping each other up, just infighting all the time. This is what we needed. This is what we want as we make a mistake. Oh no! Oh my goodness, get back on the track. We had two seconds to get back on the track then, otherwise the game's going to go uh -uh, straight back to where you went off the first time. And oh my goodness, now a massive wheelie. Yep, the pressure's got to me. The pressure's definitely got to me. My heart's pounding. The, um, the heart rate monitor should have been bought by now. <laughs> I should have been using it, should have been wearing it because now it's getting super tense. Riders behind all the time, just waiting for a chance to lunge, just waiting for a sniff and we shouldn't give him a chance. We really shouldn't. We just have to keep on going. We just have to keep the focus, keep the dream alive and just focus on what we're doing right now. We can't allow them a chance. If we make another mistake, then I tell you what, I would think it would be over. Rowan van der Moesdijk, I've just been talking about him not having a good Grand Prix weekend, but still, after the crash, he's here again. He's up into second position and he's still in pursuit. So he's leading the charge then, so it's going to be one lap left. Grant on board the KTM is leading the Grand Prix right now, or at least the race two, but the whole Grand Prix standings, I think we might have the advantage, but it's down to this. One lap. One lap, and their lap times are much quicker than ours. It seems to have just created a little bit of a divide there. We have a bit of a gap, so hopefully this will be enough to just hold on to the end. Not one rider has put an actual move on as yet. No one has gone for a lunge, but you never know what's going to happen when it's the last lap of the Grand Prix, the last lap of the weekend. What can possibly happen here? I'm just doing everything I possibly can. I've gone a little bit tentative and a little bit uh, sort of defensive in some of those corners. I'm just trying to make sure that there's no chance for them to get through, but it looks like they're chopping each other up again. This is what we need, this is what we want. So just keep on going, just keep on pushing, and hopefully we can get away. And that is a huge gap, so something has just gone up behind us. That might be it, ladies and gentlemen. That might be curtains. Could this be a return to winning ways upon the return coming back to MXGP 2021? Three weeks so there's been no video. Today we come back and hopefully take the MXGP of Belgium. This could be historic. This could be absolutely legendary for the World Championship because this would be a huge point for us as well. Whoa, whoa! 
What on earth happened then? What on earth happened then? That was strange to say the least. What on earth happened then? Oh my god, the tension! The tension! The tension has gone completely... Oh my lord, you could cut it with a knife now. We were just talking about getting ahead of ourselves, just enjoying the feeling of getting into the Grand Prix groove again and coming back to winning ways. And that has just happened. The game through was an absolute curveball there. But I think we're alright. I think we're good. Can we just hold on to the end, please? I don't think my heart can take this anymore, but we'll get a massive leap here. We've got the job done. Do we get it job done across the line? We do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the end of the Grand Prix, race two of Lommel is over. Grant takes the victory with Maxime Renault taking away some points away from us. And look at that lap time. Six seconds difference. Bloody hell. Jed Beaton finished in third place. Ruben Fernandez in fourth and Michael Sander in fifth. And looking at the Grand Prix results, we somehow take the victory. We won the second race, got the third place in the first race, and then Jed Beaton did the opposite to us. But somehow, we won the Grand Prix. I'm certainly not complaining. Maybe we had the quicker laps entirely. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. But that works for me. I'm very happy with that result. Jaeger Schertz finishes on the podium with third place with 35 points. So there is your World Championship leader, another Grand Prix victory in the bag for Grant on board the KTM Race Store MX2 team. And I tell you what, that was a hard fought one. A little bit scary at the end there, but we now lead the World Championship by a good chunk of points. 45 points in the bag for Matt Grant. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments section down below. If you want to see more MXGP, of course, let me know as well. But upon that note, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next Grand Prix. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.